a new session, and with it we turn our direction, our attention to another important aspect of performance when it comes to web applications, and JavaScript for that matter. That is about how and when do you refresh things on your screen. Starting with the DOM, our first topic, let's jump right into it and understand why do you want to have a strategy when it comes to updating things on your stage. Welcome to a new chapter and here and now we're going to be focusing on reflows and reflows are basically whenever the screen refreshes and what I really want to focus on is the complexity of adding a lot of things one after each other. So if we're making updates to our screen, we really want to make the most minimal updates we have to, to create the best effect that we need to create. So what I want to do is I want to revisit my code and I want you to scroll down into our, the area that has the most action on the screen, which is our creative clock. In this creative clock, if you just run through it quickly, we're going to notice that we're creating a new div. And then we're adding that div into our screen, into our body, every single time inside of our loop. So literally, we're adding the items one after each other. Now, this is not really great from a performance perspective. Now, the easiest solution that we could do to try to improve this logic is to create here another array. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I'll just create here just a, a, a you know really bad name. I'm just going to call it A for array. Um, or let's just give it a, you know, let's give it a logical name, a item. So for a item, what I'd want to do is I'm going to basically just push in that item and I'm going to go ahead into my div and I'm going to push that div into it. And instead of adding my div directly to my body, I'm adding it into this array. And once our array is over, once our, our run of this array is completed, then we're going to go ahead and then just push in the whole array into the body. Now, this is not completely efficient, but we're getting closer to more efficient code because we're not reflowing. We're not refreshing the screen a hundred times within a millisecond, but instead of that, we're doing it once. Now, if we go ahead and click on refresh, we're still going to see performance issues and maybe even more severe ones. The reason why we're seeing a performance issue is also connected to the fact that we're creating a new array every single second and we're pushing using the push function, basically adding more function calls. So literally, we're just adding here 100 function calls. And on top of that, we might have gained the performance of the reflow, but we destroyed our performance from a perspective of calling a function. So let's go ahead and try to figure out a solution where we're calling this, not calling this function. Now, the only way for us to do that is if we set ourselves a creation of an uh, object only once. So how about we create that array only once somewhere in our constructor of our creative clock. So we'll go back into our creative clock and just add another another variable, but we're going to add this variable to be a global variable. So I'm going to go ahead and add it into my prototype chain and I'm going to add this global variable and I will just call this global variable something like um, last items. So last items is going to be an array and I'm just going to go ahead and just literally just create here a new array or literally just create that array and set that array up. Once I've created that array, I don't know how many items will be inside of this array. But again, what I am getting here in this creation process is I could cut the process and the need to basically create an array each time. I could then create a reference just to that specific item. Now I'm not creating an array each time. But we still have an issue and our issue is that each time we're basically pushing items inside. We want to solve that problem as well. One way for us to solve this problem is to define into our array what its length is. One thing we could do is making sure that our array will be empty when we start off. We could set the length to be zero, making sure we're emptying it out. And then we probably would want to also set the actual length of our index. Now, in our case, because we have here an index that could be any number and not zero, and we can have your account that's any number and not zero, we're going to have to calculate those values and change this logic. So I'm going to go ahead and create another variable right here. And this new variable, we really want to make sure that our count will actually be the real count. Or even better, we don't even have to create a new array for that. We could literally just go ahead because we're not, we don't have any reference to something that is specifically critical for it to be in a specific index. I could literally just go ahead to my count and say, hey, count, your equals count minus index. Okay, so we're making sure that our count equals 
the actual value between the index we're in and the count. And last but not least, we could set our index to be zero now that we've set that and actually found the right indexing that we need. Now, if we run our application one more time, everything should continue working. Well, at least we hope so. So let's go ahead and just make sure that everything is working before we continue. So if I click here, refresh, we'll see that everything is still working. We're still seeing this hit on our performance. And a lot of it has to do to the fact that we're running here a lot of functions. So the more functions we cut, the better. So let's continue with the sample before we move further. And what I want to talk next is about talking about how do we get rid of this push? So once I've set my index to be length to be zero, now that I know the actual length of my item, now that I know how many items are in this in this uh, um, array or need to be in the array, I could go ahead after that array was reset and literally set it to be the, the length of the count, which basically will make sure that our, we're going to index and save room in our memory for this array now to hold that amount of items. Now that we've done that, we don't have to create pushes anymore. We could go ahead and literally position the items directly into an element that of our pleasing because we just set here in position I because we have the index and it's inside of the length that we've defined. Now we're not using that function anymore. And if I save my code and run it just one more time, we should see a small gain in performance. So you can see that we're definitely seeing that small gain in performance. That chunk of pressure that was in the beginning is not as strong, even though we still have a lot of things that we could do to improve. So again, when we're looking at this and we fix this item with the array, we also want to remove any other function. So in this case, for example, if we're taking just a quick peek at this, we see that we're doing a calculation and we're adding into a, basically into a div twice we're adding a value that is constant. So one is like, we really don't need to do this calculation. It is there a hundred times. So again, continuing on, we could say here the half width and we'll set the half width to be the width divided by two. And we'll go ahead and we'll do here a half height and that would be our height divided by two. So already just by doing this, we're improving our performance, right? Because we're cutting down another calculation that needs to be done inside of here. And this is exactly the places, exactly the places where animations are happening that you really want to put your, your weight in and try to figure out how do you cut things down? All right. So we just cut it a little bit further. What else could we get rid of? Another item that we could get rid of is the fact that we're using functions. In our case, we're creating a div and we're adding all these strings together. Why don't we also go ahead and set our style directly instead of uh, leaning on jQuery for that? And I could go ahead here and just, this needs another comma, create a style, go ahead and put here top position. And let me just put here a hard coded value for a second. And we're going to put here left position. And then I'm going to go ahead here and just substitute the value that we have here with the actual value. So for our top position, what we want to do is we want to position the value in our width. Basically, we want to add the value inside of our width. Uh, oh, you know, I confuse myself because I use this WH stuff. So why don't I just call it left and top? So we'll call this left. We'll call this top. So I'm not going to confuse myself. And I'll go ahead here and just call this left again and top. And now I could position here my top. I could position here my left. Much easier for me to read this now in this type of configuration. And I'm going to put here the top. Oh, I'm going to put here the left. There we go. All right, so we're already improving again. So now we don't need these two lines anymore. We could literally just get rid of them. Another something that we don't need to call inside of a loop. All right, so if we save this, our application should become a little bit better in performance again. So if we go ahead there and just click on refresh, we should see a slight improvement in our performance again. Now, our positions that we placed them were not the right positions, so we're going to have to reposition and improve those positions again. So if we go ahead here and see what did we do wrong in our positioning, uh, we'll see that for our one is we have here this, we're already using the variable top and left, and that's a big no-no on our end. Um, so we want to make sure that we're not creating a variable twice. So I'm going to call this um, initial left in left in top. And I'll just go ahead here and set that initial left and initial top. And again, we're taking it step by step deliberately because we want to make sure that we're improving and you see the logic of where do you want to, what do you want to do? What do you want to remove? What do you want to do to improve your flow? So again, I'm going to save this, go back into my application, click on refresh. And, and again, 
slight improvements one at a time where removing things from our for loop are going to improve our flow in general. Another problem that we have here that is very obvious, I hope, at this stage is this item is completely static. This item was not really changing. We're adding the same values each time, but yet we're calculating them over and over and over. So why don't we take this string, this logic that we've created here, why don't we move it up to be a variable of its own as well? So I'm going to call this uh, sdiv and literally go ahead and turn that into a string. And just by turning into a string, even without changing anything, I could literally just go ahead and just add here a string. Again, reducing our calculations dramatically. So you see all these stuff slowly, slowly as you progress through and, and figure out your logic, you're gonna see that so many places where you could improve your code and these slow improvements are gonna create dramatic effects, dramatic improvements into your, into your code itself. Now, in this case, we also wanna make sure that the content is in, gonna go in the right, elements i'm going to put here also uh, px for pixels just to make sure that it's going to the right place and and one thing that i could do is also just create here also a, a, a trace just to see that this is really the values that i've want that I would want to, to get so i'm going to could here a console log just to make sure that this div is actually sitting where we want it to sit so i'm just going to go ahead and save that and really quickly just take a peek at our console and i could see in my console that um, I have here a value that is seems to be right, definitely seems to be right. So for our left, we're, we're left, right, everything here seems to be logical. If I go out here, just click on a quickly refresh here. Okay, so we're in the right place now. I, mu I must have not saved it before previously. All right, beautiful. So now that we saved it, we made the change, we moved it to the right position. Again, another few mistakes that we have here. We're using this width divided by two only once now. It's not in a loop. We don't need that variable anymore. So I could, not that it's such a big deal, but I could literally just go ahead and for my um, left position, I could just go ahead there and just set that left position, put inside of a, a bracket, connect it in together. For my height, I could go ahead and do that for my height and I could get rid of two variables that are not really needed because they're only referred to once throughout the lifetime of the application. So I could literally just go ahead and delete those because they're not needed anymore. Now you can see how slowly, slowly these elements that we're doing are improving our logic. In the next lesson, we're going to really go into the concept of reflows and see the biggest mistake really that we're having here beyond the fact that now we're not creating necessarily a reflow, but we're creating a logic that is very, very cumbersome because what we're doing is technically we're taking our element we're creating a jQuery item, we're creating an animation, we're adding it all together, we're doing all these steps completely together, we're not giving our items a chance to breathe, and we're throwing them into a logic here, which is probably also a loop that is gonna run through all these items as they're adding it into the stage. Even if it was efficient, we could do it much better by just adding those items directly into the stage, which is something we're gonna look at immediately in the next lesson, and also look into how could we duplicate in a much more efficient way. So we'll see you in the next lesson where we continue this process of improving this animation loop where our DOM refreshes are. So any place where we're adding content to the stage is really the place where you want to give most of your focus to try to make it the best that you can, the most efficient that you can.